This is News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM KFYO. I'm Matt Martin. Sitting in with me is Matt Crow. And we've got Councilman Massingale with us today. And uh, so we're going to go right to you, Councilman. How was the meeting yesterday? It was great. We had a great meeting. We uh, met off site yesterday. We're going to pick uh, once a quarter, we're going to meet off site out of the council chambers and uh, in different parts of the city to make sure, um, you know, we'll make sure we're making ourselves available during those meetings to people that um, might live close to those areas. So yesterday we met in the EOC, which is the Emergency Operations Center. This is a new facility for the city of Lubbock, way overdue. Uh, We were still operating in um, uh, the basement, the old EOC in the basement of um, Municipal Square, which was the same EOC. My dad worked for the city, and I remember going down to that Emergency Operations Center in the early 80s. So Um, this facility is way overdue. This facility is out, uh, just to remind our citizens, is out on MLK towards the airport. It's by uh, what I call Fire Command, and um, it's more of a fort. It will withstand high winds, and uh, it's self-sufficient, has power backup, and we can control fire dispatch, police, LPNL, all the vital operations of the city from the EOC, and we had a, a, a period of time before our meeting yesterday where the public was able to come out and see it. Well, let me ask you this. So being the e, uh, at the EOC, did it change any of the demographics of who you saw coming into the meetings? Uh, did it did it feel different? Did it, did it seem different? Did you see different people? You know, um, what we saw, we had a, the, the, the audience was filled by a large Texas Tech journalism class, so... I don't know that I scanned the audience for what looked different yesterday, but the feel was different. Um, it yeah. was just a good opportunity to show it off. I, I, you going to do any more of those, or are you going to hold them off site? Do you have any other? Places? Yeah, we have, we have three more planned. I can't. I, I'm not quite. I can't remember where uh, the mayor and the city manager have worked this out where we're headed. But we'll do one once a quarter this year, and then we'll reevaluate after this year. And another thing you said you uh, wanted to talk about was Lubbock Alert. Now, I love Lubbock Alert. I get alerts on my phone, and I like I like the traffic part of it as much as anything else. You know, there was uh, an investigation over here on Slide and right off a of Slide in the Loop. And, you know, that's right there pretty close to my house. I knew where not to drive <laughs> because they had the whole, the whole uh, access road cut off and that, uh, I think, the the ramp there and man you need to know those things before you get there otherwise you're going to be stuck in traffic for a long time well lubbock alert has been um has worked well for us it's a great way to communicate with citizens about a variety of uh events associated with uh the city of lubbock but most importantly is emergency events and weather related events and so um we, we've had Lubbock Alert for a little over a year now, and we're at about 67,000 subscribers. And so we'd like to encourage everybody, especially in this uh, period of time of um, spring weather, to sign up. So here's a reminder, uh, www.lbkalert.com, or you can text your zip code to 888-777, and you can sign up. You can uh, start the sign-up process there. And, and like Matt referred to, you can customize your alerts. So if you're interested in alerts from the library, mm-hmm. you can have library alerts. Well, I'll tell you, I think I've got, I've got alerts from almost everywhere, but I, I don't get massive amounts of alerts. You know, I'm, And I'm not getting you know, the basket-weaving class over at uh, the library or anything. But you, know, you, it's, could, it's if you're in, but you could if alerts. you're interested in that. Yeah, uh, but... but uh, I get mostly stuff that you would do news wise and then traffic uh, related uh, traffic related and you can also tell it where you want your alerts from you know I mm-hmm. live on this part of town I work on this part of town mm-hmm. give me those alerts I mean it's very very easy to set up and uh, LPD uh, works with it very well just like you said traffic or, or if there's an accident we, we we get the information out quickly so again if you're not signed up take the time to sign up because you want to be you want to get that alert on your phone should there ever be an emergency event. And yeah, yeah, I was going to say to your point, Matt, is that it, it doesn't bombard you no. with things that are worthless. Yeah. I mean, mine's gone off, I don't know, half a dozen times, and normally it's a traffic deal, mm-hmm. which you're right. I mean, you like to know about Just it. Just get away from there. But it's not something that's going to deluge, deluge you, rather, with, you know, meaningless stuff. So, so Councilman, one other question. We had um, – 
uh, that that's been a big question before we get into yesterday's topics uh we'll we'll take a break and then do that but um is the i'm sorry the citizens tower is is everything on track time wise and on budget citizens tower is on track we will mm-hmm. we will open that building we will be in that building <laughs> by the end of the year As a matter of fact uh, i did a walk through yesterday as, as you know i chair the council facilities committee so i uh, pay real close attention. I probably drive by it every day, mm-hmm. but it is progressing. Uh, it's it's uh, within its budget, and uh, we look forward to moving in. It, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, we're real excited to see some exterior changes. If you've driven over there lately, but um, should How many be elevators. Does that building have? So it will have two personnel elevators and, and a freight elevator. A freight elevator. Yeah. So I've got a question, and uh, I was talking to Matt about it beforehand, but. Uh, is there any way that I could get a tour of the building once it's all completed? Absolutely. Okay. Well, I want a tour of the building once it's all completed. We can so. set that up. We'll all set right. you in the freight elevator and take you up and down. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you'd be like so, uh, up. Down. The, the tour is fascinating to see the building and, and to see it, it, it uh, in progress right now, especially uh, as you, as the glass, almost all the glass is done at this yeah, point. It's, it's all cool. the elevator parts are in. We're really looking forward to getting the elevators up, and uh, yeah, we'll be glad to take you through. All right, sounds great. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and take a break. When we get back, we'll go into last night's council meeting. This is News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM KFYO. I'm Matt Martin. Sitting in with me is Matt Crow, and we're we're here with uh, Councilman Massingale, and we're, we're going to get into the uh, meeting yesterday. And uh, we've already got some comments on one of your uh, one of the things y'all did in the meeting, and that's alcohol in parks. So um, let's start out. What is it that y'all did as far as having alcohol in the parks? So we we approved an ordinance uh, to allow uh, events that meet certain qualifications at certain parks that they could incorporate alcohol into their, their event. This was a second reading from the prior council meeting, and um, th- this ordinance uh, was modified from its um, – from the first reading, uh, as we discussed last night, we, we eliminated one park and, and I, let me just read the list of parks that, that you will be able to have alcohol at Burl Huffman, Dunbar historical Lake, Leftwich park, Yano Estacada Lake, May Simmons, McKenzie park, Maxie park and McAllister park. So they're like the very big parks in Lubbock. They're not, that's correct. They're these, not these small are, park neighborhood parks. These are big. That's a great parks. point. That yeah, That's a great point. And, um, all TABC regs still apply. There's application process. There's a provision in in the um, uh, amendment last night that uh, Mayor Pro Tem Griffith proposed that uh, if there's a youth event going on already scheduled at the park, all deals are off. You can't get it. You can't get your permit. Generally, larger uh, events, larger uh, a thousand uh, people or larger. There's Required. There's insurance requirements. That's a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, th- these are going to be your larger events. I-, I think the mayor's marathon falls into this bucket. An event like that. Uh, fourth on Broadway. Oh, uh, I don't. Out if it would be at a park, well, yeah, well, I guess, I guess, guess at McKenzie. Sure, I, I, I think but that that would be a lot of kids there. Sure. I don't know if they'd be okay with that. But anyway, I, I was just thinking of sure large we, events that we have at parks. Mm-hmm. We, we had productive discussion about it uh, last night and. Uh, I believe it passed six to one. You know, and and the other thing I see is that you could actually, uh, and and you said that there's going to be rules around the events. It's not like somebody's going to be having a a party at midnight out at the park with loud music and and beer and everything. You've got rules on when it's going to be done and how it's going to be done. Yeah, yeah, you've got to you've got to. There, there's several hoops you'll have to jump through. So you you know you if you. You're not going to be able to just throw together an event that you won't have alcohol at. You're, there's just there's a lot of requirements on this to get to that point. Okay, um, so but I, I could see uh, where this potentially could actually create new events at parks in the city of Lubbock. You know, it, uh, people wanting to have events. Uh, for example, uh, and, and this is not something I, I see at a park, but you have uh, coming up. I think it's coming up uh, early next month. You have the uh, Chamber of Commerce with their wine tasting event. And, you know, something like that could potentially be held in a large park instead of being at, uh, I think they're having at the Windmill Museum or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, those are the kind of things that, you know, you've got these adult events that we already have. They're not crazy. They're things that are already going on. 
that could be moved to a park if if it's the weather's yeah. nice or whatever. You make a great point. It certainly makes it available for those events, those organized events that want to incorporate large open areas. You know, uh, they want to incorporate alcohol into their event because some. Uh, I mean, think of an event area right now that you could have alcohol at that is a large open area. There's just not really events. The fair park, maybe. I think you might be able to pull that off. I know that they, I know that they did uh, the, the. I think the barbecue event out there, and they had a beer or something. But it what it's it's that's the only event center I can think of with a large open area that you sure. could maybe get some alcohol out there. You know, and then. I think that's a good point, I, I'm, and I know you can have alcohol at that at, in, in that center at, at the fair park. But when you go back and look at, for example, there's the Buddy and Maria, I mean, uh, Buddy Holly Recreation Area, which is you know the Canyon Lake, um, that just west of Broadway. Mm-hmm. I mean, just west of University. I mean, that's a nice area. You've got a water feature. There's some structures out there. That's a nice place to have an event. Yeah. So. This may be putting the cart ahead of the horse, but was there any, ever any discussion about booze and, and recreational halls like senior citizen centers or recreation centers? So, for instance, out at, I think, May Simmons, there's that senior citizen center. There's like a community center. Would, 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 would they be there able is. to have alcohol at events at those uh, kind we, of facilities? We, May Simmons has a – so they have a small senior citizen center, yeah. and then they have a community center. There was no – discussion and that was not part of this ordinance yeah. the other thing too that kind of, kind of jogged me a little bit uh if the expo center ever gets built was there any ever talk about liquor being sold out there do you remember anything no, like i don't that? think they've had that discussion yet yeah i mean it's a ways I mean, off as, but i was just curious if you'd be able to buy as, a beer at the rodeo or something i can't see them not doing it though I could agree. you buy, point, could you I buy mean, a beer at the, the coliseum during the rodeo uh no, no i don't think so it was this it was city owned so i don't I was just well. We, I mean, there's a lot of alcohol was served in the Coliseum because I, I mean, think about the Cotton Kings games. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. so so then no, I'm just thinking because if you, I I I just I I can't remember. I haven't been to the rodeo since the '90s, so well, you have the opportunity. (laughs) What about like the amphitheater out at McKenzie? They do. They sell booze there now. Yes, it, it's one of the listed other facilities, so it you can buy alcohol at Moonlight Musical. Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking because if the Expo Center gets built and they want to have concerts out there, which I'm sure they would eventually. I, uh, I just can't imagine yeah. in, in today's world no different than Texas Tech considering like beer and it, wine or that, something. You know, yeah. and I'm not a part of those discussions or that group with the Expo Center, but I can't imagine that they wouldn't sell alcohol. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that Councilman Griffith uh, put that caveat in about the kids' events next to events where alcohol may be served. I think that's a great idea. That, that Jeff's got a good one there. Yeah, he. Inter- I think that was a suggestion by Councilwoman Joy, but he proposed the amendment, and uh, I think ev- everyone was supportive who, of that. Who um, who voted against it? Uh, Councilwoman Joy. Okay. Yeah, I was I was thinking that was who it was. I was just going to ask. So, um, I mean, don't get me wrong. We've got a lot of people uh, that have texted in. They're not happy about it. We've had people that are very happy about it. So I know that uh, it's not necessarily a political thing. It's it's a, a personal thing. Some people are completely against alcohol. Some people are just afraid of what could happen if uh, somebody gets drunk. But the fact is that, uh, at as you said, with TABC, there's going to be a lot of parameters around the events. People that are drunk are not supposed to be getting served. People that are under 21 are not supposed to be getting served. And, uh, you know, uh, the people who are doing the event are going to be held accountable for that the same way a bar or a, a that, something would be as well. That's the point I was about to make, Matt, is, uh, you know, if you you apply for to have alcohol at an event in a, in a city park and you, you're a bad actor, yeah. you don't run your event like you, uh, that meets expectations, you're not ever going to get it. You're not going to get to do it again. Mm-hmm. So we're going to police this. City staff's going to watch it. Um, we're going to make sure that um, we've got good operators at these events. Yeah, and I mean, the city is not necessarily going to make a lot of money off of this, but it's not going to be something where if you're putting together a small, inexpensive event, you're probably not going to be able to have alcohol there, right? That's correct. I mean, correct. it's going to cost you some money yeah. to get every all the permits and everything in place for this. Yeah, you know, I, I thought I was glad to see that um, staff had worked in a litter deposit because oh, yeah. that's important to me. You need to be mm-hmm. if you're going to have an event, you need to clean up after yourself. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we we and we may have to modify it again and there may be something we're missing, but um I think it's uh, uh will be welcomed by the public. Yeah. 
So, I, I mean, like I said, it's not going to make everybody happy. You can't make everybody happy, but I think it's a, a good move personally. I think it's a, a move in the right direction. Uh, if I go to an event, I know I don't, I don't buy alcohol at events because I walk in and you see an eight dollar, you know, uh, what is it, cup of beer. I can go home and I can have a something I'd rather have for a lot less. So that's what I do. Anyway, be back. This is News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM KFYO. Uh, we are broadcasting from the Thacker Jewelry Studios. You can uh, get custom jewelry, engagement rings, and more at ThackerJewelry.com. And I'm Matt Martin. Sitting in with me is Matt Crow, and we have Councilman Massingale here. And, I mean, we're talking about all kinds of stuff. We're getting a lot of texts about HB2, SB2. Um, we may get into that if we have enough time, but uh, Councilman Massingale has been on record. You can listen to some of our previous conversations. Um, it's uh, they're they're on uh, I think the KFYO YouTube site, but we've just got a lot to get into. Um, next thing I think you want to talk about was the mayor's marathon coming up. Yeah, thanks, Matt. So we also got a briefing on the on the mayor's marathon. Uh, just to remind everybody, last year was the first mayor's marathon, and we're looking forward to the second. Uh, looks like our our participation could likely double, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll uh, this will be April twenty eighth. Big reminders that we'll close the loop down. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, we have a full marathon around the loop. We we have a half marathon, and we also have a five k. Yeah, who knew the loop was right at twenty six? I know point whatever miles is. I you mean, know, it's was it's like the it was the perfect that way. size <laughs> just for a marathon. You know, I gotta I gotta, I gotta uh, uh, give props to our city staff. Everybody that, that's involved in putting this thing on is they had this animated. Uh, demonstration last night about how they open the loop back up as the race comes around the loop. And if you have time to go watch our video from last night, it's making it's, sure nobody gets run over. Yeah, but um, uh, we're fully. I think we're back open by one. The full loops back open by one. Not if I'm in it. Thirty and it's going to be like three or four. By if I remember <laughs> if this correctly, by ten thirty, everything we're already open east of Indiana. So. Uh, you don't have to be a runner. There's a lot. There's going to be food trucks and there's a lot of festivities. Um, but Sunday, April 28th, uh, there's still time to sign up and run if you want to run. Um, we'd love to have you, but it's a, it was a great event last year and we'd encourage everybody to come out again this year. So if, if you do have stragglers, do y'all have something that comes and picks them up and says, sorry, the road's opening back up. You got to get off. Oh yeah, there's a ton of support out out on the uh, raceway. Every mile is medical support, and uh, uh, you know there's porta potties and refer, you know if you need Gatorade or whatever. Uh, but it's a great event. Uh, I ran the half marathon last year. The mayor and I both did, and um, you know you don't you think you're going to run a race in Lubbock, Texas? You think it's going to be flat, but then you get those overpasses. Yeah. And, those overpasses are a lot taller when you run them than when you drive over them. So, well, let me ask you this: um, Is it still and and I think it is, a, is it, but is it still a qualifier for the Boston it Marathon? Is. That's a great. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. It is still a qualifier for the Boston Marathon, so it attracts attention, uh, uh, regional attention. So we're we're excited about it. We think it's a, a a great event for Lubbock. And the other thing it does for us it it allows a it's a a, a, a activity or a test for our first responders to you know shut down a perimeter and be able to open it back up so we're also um you know we're we're doing other things using this event to to test all the features of our first responders and what we might do in an emergency should you have to to close something down for an emergency event so it has multiple uh, purposes councilman speaking of emergencies did anybody tell you all what why the 911 thing went down yesterday uh, i don't know We've gotten a full explanation. That has that's not the city. First of all, that's uh, the nine eleven communication district. And I apologize. I think I have an email with an explanation. I haven't read it I'm yet. Just but, curious. Yeah. Um, I figured it was electronic yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. And just yeah. Okay. So the other big thing now, I I think it's a big thing is the resolution that y'all did for I twenty seven the the cleanup of that I guess dump site out there. Yeah. Um, what exactly does this resolution do? Well, we had a couple of resolutions last night that the council supported as it relates to state and federal legislation. 
one, one is, and we're working closely with our state delegation, uh, Representative Burroughs, uh, Representative Frulo, and Senator Perry have all uh, been very helpful in the process of trying to clean up the dump site that everybody would recognize um, on I-27. That's an old uh, construction um do you know debris when that, side when that shut down? Um, it's been uh, it, it, twelve years. Yeah, it's years. burned twice. I think once in '02, once in '09. Um, uh, it was mentioned last night that that you know at it, it, one time it burned so bad it uh, caused flight delays at, at uh, Lubbock International Airport. But what we're doing is seeking assistance from the state. Uh, we've worked closely with TCEQ. Um, to uh, tr- try to get the funds uh, appropriated so that we can, the city of Lubbock can help. I think we would probably look to the county for some help and try to get that eyesore cleaned up. And this is actually, uh, I guess officially it's private property. Someone else owns it? That's correct. That's okay. correct. And it's, um, I guess you would consider it more or less abandoned by mm-hmm. the owners. It's a, it's it's quite a project to clean up. And the other thing is, uh, y'all are actually working with the county as well. We had a uh, Curtis Parish in here. They did the resolution mm-hmm. on uh, Monday, mm-hmm. and then y'all did the resolution yesterday, and it kind of to work together for this with the state. Yeah, we, we, we've got partners in this, and so everybody's involved. I think everybody understands the importance. It's one of those things you didn't wish you'd, you you had to deal with. I mean, I would remind everybody that that's not even in the city limits. Yeah, but. Uh, it, it, it's an you know, eyesore. The mayor, the the mayor made the comment last night that it, it's our front doorstep, and it is, and we need to get it cleaned up. We were talking off air about, you know, it, that's your that's what greets you when you get in from the airport, and um, it's not a good first impression of of Lubbock. Not at we're, all. We're a lot better than that. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about more about I twenty seven and and potentially extending that. So uh, we'll be back right after this. We are News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM KFYO. We're speaking with Councilman Massingale. We want to go ahead and, and get to that. We're running out of time. But y'all uh, y'all talked about an I-27 extension last night, and, and this is something like uh, we were talking about kind of in the break. It's been going on for a long time. It's something that really needs to be done. Uh, and it's uh, Anyway, just tell us about it. So we, we supported last night uh, – Council considered and supported a resolution supporting the designation of the Ports to Plains route, which is the extension of I-27 from uh, Mexico to Canada. Uh, we're a uh, one of the larger members in the Ports to Plains coalition, along with Amarillo, San Angelo, Midland, and several other smaller cities and towns all along, as you can imagine, that route. And you can see that route at, at the Ports to Plains um, Website, you know, we're looking for state and federal assistance to try to get something moving on this. We feel like I thirty five's at capacity, and we we'd certainly benefit from a north south corridor that passes through this this area. Uh, and we think extending I twenty seven is a is the appropriate way to do it. Well, I'll tell you, if if you had I twenty seven all the way from Mexico all the way up to Canada. And well, I mean, with the traffic that's already on I thirty five, it would be so much easier to take that route mm-hmm. than I thirty five. And going through Dallas and Austin and all the, I mean, it's just absolute nightmare sometimes. Yeah, and a lot of it is connecting because there is a lot of the pieces that are already done. If you've ever driven from here uh, to to Denver, that that route's pretty good. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you've got you've got good roads and uh, four you lane roads. Some of the small, you know, yeah. around some of the small we, towns. We, we all know we'd probably like some significant help between here and here and Midland and, and farther south. But uh, and I think the 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 oil industry right now would would. Uh, enjoy that too, but uh, I got to spend some time uh, uh, with the Porsche to Plains Coalition last year in D.C. and they're traveling next week. Um, the ma- the mayor will be with them, and uh, we'll be they'll be working in Washington D.C. to continue to to make um, our legislators up there aware of it and and how important it is to this area and how important it is to Texas and quite frankly the nation. You have to remind everybody that that that. That route would carry the food, fiber, and fuel that this area produces to the rest of the country, and that's uh, there's just multiple reasons to justify the route. So we discussed that and approved that resolution last night. Yeah. 
All right. Um, and then the other thing I've noticed that now, this is on, I think, uh, Loic Online, which is the uh, the AJ. They're talking about East Side Revitalization. Um, what what exactly did y'all do as far as the East Side Revitalization? So we approved a grant last night from LIDA, which is very similar to our downtown revitalization grants that LIDA um, – has an application process for. And so there's a business that was willing to invest uh, money in a um, shopping center and open up, I believe it's Cricket Wireless uh, there uh, in East Lubbock. And um, it's like a, it's a 10% permittable grant. So in other words, if they were going to go in and their permit to upgrade the facility was $100,000, then once they spent their money, they could apply for a $10,000 grant once the work was complete and they would get okay. it. Um, so I, I have a couple of questions just from the, the text lines. Uh, one person wanted to know, uh, what is the number? How much has been spent on Citizens Tower? Because y'all had a budget, I think, of $65 million. Uh, it's originally sixty. It is a sixty-four million dollar budget that hasn't changed. The construction piece of it is forty-eight million dollars. That hasn't changed. So uh, those numbers have not changed. We continue that project is uh, in budget right now. Okay, and and something that uh, you know we, we've talked about a lot in this studio. Uh, you know, we had Paul Bean in here. We talked about it, and that is uh, fixing the streets downtown. Um, is there anything in the works? I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, a lot of people love those brick streets, and I don't know that y'all are going to get rid of those. I'm all for getting rid of those, but is there anything in the works to actually repair the streets that are there or get rid of them and put something else there? You know, streets, we can work on streets for days and mm-hmm. days and days, and we can spend mo- we, 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 we can spend all the money we want on streets. Mm-hmm. Uh, downtown streets, I, I think this council would like to address them. I think there's some things that are in front of that. You know, I, I always remind uh, my colleagues on the council that out in District 4, we need to see 114th Street fully developed. Mm-hmm. But uh, I agree with you. Uh, the downtown streets have to be addressed. Yeah. Well, uh, and, and here's my thing. Uh, y'all are putting a lot of money into downtown, um, and a lot y'all are wanting a lot of businesses to put money into downtown. If I owned a business, I would look at downtown. I would drive downtown on those streets, and I would say, never mind, and I would go put it in southwest Lubbock. Where the where it's easy for me to get back and forth, so that's that's where I'm looking at it. Just from mm-hmm. somebody that um, you know, I'm from the outside looking in. I don't think that I would move a business downtown where the streets where I could just destroy my vehicle just by driving down the street. I mean, there, and, and I'm not. The, 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 they're 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 certainly um, becoming a priority. I, I would hope at this point with the energy downtown that if somebody considered downtown for their business. I I hope the streets wouldn't be an obstacle because there's so many more great things happening downtown. But I agree with you. Uh, we we need a plan for downtown streets. Okay. What is is that Buddy Holly or Texas that, that takes that swoop? It's Texas. It's, it's Texas. 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 Man, yeah. that's that's like <laughs> streets of San Francisco. Yeah, going yeah, down yeah. And they, up, uh, under, down. The, under the railroad, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and Texas has that one Woo. spot. Uh, where is it? It's over by the McCorders area. That just, oh, yeah. just I you're mean, right. it will literally tear up any vehicle. Right you, there you, by, if you're going more than 10 miles an hour, your tires are gone. It's right there by Municipal Square uh-huh. where PD is. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, there there are problems downtown. I was just going to ask if, if that's in the works or if any, y'all are talking about it. So. Yeah, I mean, it's just there's a tremendous amount of street needs, and I would remind everybody that we, on our maintenance, we this council has is, 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 uh, made it a priority to – to make sure we're we're doing street maintenance and using cash, not debt. Mm-hmm. In other words, get out of this habit of borrowing money to fix streets, and then the streets don't last, but you're still paying for the debt. And so, you know, we're not at a level we'd like to have that at a, lar- a larger funding level than it is today. But uh, we're going to continue to work um, within that priority and fund our street maintenance, and then we'll look at uh, ways to build streets as well. Mm-hmm. Councilman, when do they start? Breaking ground on the uh, police substations. So we'll break ground on our uh, uh, east substation in June. Right. They're not all going to happen at once, right? Nope, but they will be identical. Yeah. In other words, we paid for one set of plans. Yeah. Um, the south substation will be July. And the plan is August for the north substation, and we're still determining where that north substation is going to be. Will they take about a year to build? Should be, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Good. and that'll be exciting. And then just to remind everybody that uh, following the construction of those, the, the uh, PD headquarters will now be built 
south of the parking lot at Citizens Tower. Okay. And, and Councilman, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about? I don't think so. We covered pretty much everything from last night. So. Perfect. Well, thank you for coming out. Well, Always I, a pleasure, we can't let him, we Matt can't, and Matt. I we like can't it. let him go without wishing him a happy birthday oh, tomorrow. That's right. Happy birthday. Thank you. That's right. Thank yeah. you. Uh, perfect day for Texas Tech to get a win. That's uh, right. If, if Texas Tech, if you want to give Councilman Massengill a birthday present, that would be the perfect one. <laughs> That'd be great. Yes. <laughs> I'd love that. All right, uh, Councilman, thank you for coming out, and we'll we'll see you again. Absolutely. We'll be right back after these messages. Have fun tomorrow.